friend Jim here with JB's Big Adventure coming to you from Lake Chapala, Mexico. I've got to say, this is probably the most important video that I've actually produced and made for the year and a half, year and uh, eight, nine months that we've had the channel. I did one. My very first video had everything to do with what you need to know before you come visit Lake Chapala. When Barbara and I came our first time, we knew nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, we'd seen some videos. We got a bit disappointed reaching out to a YouTuber here locally. Um, and basically his comment back to us was he just didn't have the time to talk to us, which I just really thought was very, very poor. That's one of the reasons why I always want to be warm when people meet us out on the street or I'm talking to somebody on the phone. Um, people are important. And uh, this is a big decision for people to make. So this video has everything to do with being able to set you up and help you be able to not have the anxiety and the struggle and the, the insecurity and the stress and everything that comes from visiting not only another country, but we hear all the things that everybody says, you're looking at Mexico. I mean, what about all the crime? And so this video is everything that you need to know that's going to be important for your trip the very first time you're coming to Lake Chapala. Before I get to that, if you haven't already, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's a great community. You know, you want to be a part of it. All you've got to do is go to the bottom right-hand corner. There's a little red box. Tap on it. You're subscribed. Also, give us one of those thumbs up. It lets other people know it's a great video to watch about retiring here to Lake Chapala. Okay. So, to the good stuff. To the important stuff. Again, this video is all about me taking the time and really making sure that you've got all the information that you need, that you've got every tool in the toolbox. So when you get here, you know more of what to expect and uh, just alleviate all the stress and anxiety that comes from not having that. Now, I had somebody recently ask me, why in fact do I do videos? Why do I talk and why do I put so much into people coming to live here? Um... Why do I care so much? The reason, oh, here I can go. The reason I care so much is this. Because I believe in living generously. To be able to give back. Barbara and I have gone through experiences that I don't want you to have to go through. We knew nothing about when we came here. Literally, we got off the plane we got our bags, and before we even got to the front door of the airport, we were told, just kind of brace ourselves, that outside we were going to see a lot of people with guns, with long guns. And there were a bunch of people. And I want you to know we got here at 10 o'clock at night. This is what we just got told. And then we get outside and we see it. We knew nothing about coming here. <laughs> that was... I just can't tell you how how much anxiety. I mean, I just could not believe it. My anxiety was was through the roof. I don't want you to have to go through that too. So that's the reason this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through all the things that I'm going to talk about. So the very first slide, because these are all going to be in slides. I don't remember exactly how many I have. I might have 20 slides. I, I don't remember. But they're going to be very important. So please, I just want to tell you. If you are coming, make sure you watch the entire video. It doesn't matter if it's a half hour, 40 minutes, or whatever it may be. It's going to be the most important video that you've watched. On top of every other video that you've ever seen about Lake Chapala, it'll be the number one most important video for you to watch. So let's go ahead and get to the video. So right out of the gate, I just want to let you know that this is the most important video for you to watch regarding your interest and checking out Lake Chapala, Mexico for yourself. In this video, you will find all of the important topics are covered to make your first visit here as an enjoyable one. This video is specifically designed for you and mine to cover everything that you need to know about your trip here to Lake Chapala. It's been produced to help alleviate any anxiety, stress, and even fear that you may be presently experiencing. So here's what I'm going to be covering in this video. The expectations of your trip, your why, your exploratory trip. It's a big decision. High anxiety, how to overcome it. 
the weather, how to pack for this trip, your passport, customs, and the importance of immigration, Guadalajara Airport and what to expect when you arrive, transportation, how to best get, be able to get around Lake Chapala, Mexican money, how to understand a little bit about the numbers, where to stay, the best accommodations, the best restaurants that you've just got to visit while you're here, tipping, when to tip and how much to tip, crime, is Lake Chapala really safe? A lot of people talk about that. That's a real fearful thing that everybody thinks about when they're coming down here or they're trying to uh, really ask questions of people looking to come down. Usually it's our friends, family, and neighbors that we're talking to about it. Um, in regards to renting versus buying, why am I going to share with you that's important to rent first? Realtors, how to find one. Wait till I share with you all it takes to be a realtor here. Rental contracts, you don't want to get ripped off. Medical and dental care, how to get up to 85% savings. Hospitals, are they good? What do they look like inside? How to get the most out of this trip. So what I'm going to be sharing with you is everything that you're going to need to know about your trip here to Lake Chapala. Okay, so let's take a look at your investigation into Lake Chapala. Over the last few months, weeks, or even years, you've heard about it, you've read about it, I'm sure you've watched many videos on YouTube about it, you might have even emailed people for information, you might have even made phone calls about it, you might have even purchased packages that talk about how to retire to Mexico. This is an investment that you've made, and I'm going to share with you right now why that's so important. So this is really a big decision because it's a major life event. You are making an investment of time, an investment of money, an investment of mental energy, an investment of emotions, and the fear of the unknown, anxiety, and stress. So talking about anxiety, I'm going to compare it to knowledge, and I'm going to share with you what's in red. So the arrow goes up to the left because presently you've got high anxiety. Why is that? Because you've got high stress levels. It's the fear of the unknown. It's a different country. Is what they say about the cartels really true? What is the crime like? Will I be safe? What should I expect? Can I really do this? And on the bottom right, the reason you have high anxiety is because you've got no low no, you've got low knowledge. So many people and so many unanswered questions that you might have is the part that really concerns you, and that's what we're going to alleviate right here. So let's first of all talk about the weather and how you're going to want to pack. So National Geographic has actually chosen Lake Chapala as having the number two best climate in the world. Yes, the number two best climate in the world. We are a mile high. We actually sit on the north shore of the largest lake in Mexico. On top of that, the temperatures are incredible. So it's like coming to a place where there's an internal spring. The average yearly temperature is 68 to 72 degrees. The rainy season is from June to September. Flowers blossom. It's green everywhere. The dry season, which is drier, is between October and May. So depending on when you're coming is how you're going to make sure that you are actually packing for your trip. So let's talk about once you get on the plane. You're going to have your passport with you. Before you land, there are flights that are going to have you get an FMM card. They'll be passing them out. You will fill out all the information on the top and also on the bottom. And what they're going to do once you get to the airport and you're going through immigration, they're going to take this card, they're going to tear it in half, you're going to be keeping the bottom half, and they're taking the top half. It will then be put inside of your passport. You do not want to lose this. This is what's legally showing that you are in Mexico and you are here legally. It's really, really important that you don't lose it. So what's it like inside the Guadalajara airport? Well, first of all, it's an international airport. And meaning is that there are flights that come to Mexico from all around the world. So here at Lake Chapala, we're only in half an hour drive away from the 
uh, one of the largest airports, I would say it's in the world, just because of the fact of the places it actually serves. But here is the thing about the airport, and that is when you get inside, you're going to realize how nice and clean and up-to-date it is. It is a wonderful airport. I mean, I'm amazed at how professional everything is and how easy and, and swift it is to be able to get through because of the fact they've got plenty of workers and employees. And so it makes the time of going to and from the airport a whole lot easier and a lot less stressful. Okay, so now let's talk about the transportation once you get to Lake Chapala. So there's a couple things. I'm going to talk about the rental car real quick. There is actually a rental car agency that is here at Lake Chapala. And if you are looking at getting a car, rental car, you do not want to get the rental car at the airport. Let me say that again. You do not want to get the rental car at the airport. Yeah, I really suggest that you get it here at Lake Chapala. What she does is actually has a service that picks you up at the curb in uh, the Guadalajara airport and then brings you directly to the auto car rate agency here at Lake Chapala. Now, on the top left, you see there is no Uber or Lyft. I actually drove for Uber and Lyft for two years in the States. I checked extensively to find out if there was that ability here. The only way that you get Uber or Lyft is the fact that when you're going from Guadalajara and you're coming to Lake Chapala, there are no Uber drivers that are here operating the service on the app taking you around Lake Chapala. So what does that mean? Well, you're either going to need to be taking taxis. I suggest private drivers. You build a relationship, and on top of that, they know where you like to go. They know where you live, and it makes it just a lot more enjoyable and fun. Also, the bus. The bus goes back and forth all throughout Lake Chapala. It turns out it's very easy to get. Um, it's only about 12 pesos for the ride, so we're talking like 60, 70 cents. And you can go all the way the 19 miles between Ocotepec and Chapala. So it is easy to catch. You can also take that uh, same bus line, the Chapala Bus Plus, and you can take it directly to Guadalajara. So there are two different bus lines, but that line will actually take you right out to Guadalajara. Also, there is a bike path that goes all the way from Chapala to Hokotepec. It's separate from the road, so you're able to know that you're safe as you're riding the bike. So you can either be taking a bicycle or what's also popular here are e-bikes. So this is basically touching on transportation, but your first time coming, I would highly recommend that you rent a car because you're going to want to be able to get around at your pace and be able to see Lake Chapala on your terms. Okay, so let's talk about where you're going to stay. There are a bunch of places here that are Airbnbs or they are hotels. Now, you're not going to find a Hilton or a Marriott here, but what you will find out are some very, very nice equipped uh, hotels or we're talking about Airbnbs. Now, something that's going to be really, really important that I would encourage you to do is to have a good idea of having the address and where it is that you're going to be going once you get here. Now, it's also good to have some references of, of good referrals, of good places to stay here. And one of the things that I offer on my relocation service is I provide for you uh, some direction in regards to where good places to stay are here at Lake Chapala. Now, one of the better things about being here at Lake Chapala, it isn't like you've, you know, you're going to be a long ways away from everything because you will be within the lakeside on the North Shore. So, but there are some really nice places to stay here that could really fit you just fine. So that would make your trip to Lake Chapala even better. Okay, let's talk about Mexican peso. So as of right now, there's a fluctuation of the value to the peso, the Mexican peso. So when Barbara and I got here, the, the value of the peso was about 21 pesos to a dollar. Now it's fluctuating right now between 17 and about 19 um, pesos per the dollar. So it goes up and down. So just figure at the easy way of figuring things out is 20 pesos to the dollar. It just makes it easier that way, which means 
For 100 Mexican pesos, it's a $5 bill. For 200 Mexican pesos, it's $10. And for 1,000 Mexican pesos, it's $50. It's a lot easier to, to really calculate what the amounts are when you understand the evenness of the peso numbers. So again, 20 pesos, 100 pesos, 200 pesos, 500 pesos, 1,000 pesos. It's very easy to get used to uh, the dollar equation when it comes to the um, the equivalent of both of the dollar along with the Mexican peso. And something that I really want to stress about uh, being able to access your money, I do suggest that folks bring maybe uh, 2,000 pesos or so that they get from their bank in whatever country that they're in, the city, the state, and bring them with them because you're going to need that once you get to the Guadalajara airport. You're going to need it to pay for your taxi or whatever service that you're using to get here to Lake Chapala. So it'll be important to have some of those. Then what happens is, in fact, with my um, relocation service, I actually point out what ATMs actually gives you the best exchange rate. That's right. Which ATMs, there's three of them, that give you the best exchange rate. And that's something that I also share with the relocation service because I want to make sure that when folks are coming from the channel and they're coming here to Lake Chapala, that their trip and their time here is best spent. And the money part of things is a lot easier to understand. Okay, let's talk about eating. Everybody's favorite subject. There are many, many great restaurants to eat here at Lake Chapala. Uh, I've only got four pictured there, but there's a lot of great other restaurants. And what I'm going to do, here's a list that actually shows a, a good number. of them. There's more to add to this. Uh, I tried to put together a little list of some that I can just really think of off the top of my head that can be of help. Uh, the Blue Rose, it's a steakhouse. Simply Joyful actually has a great salad bar. La Fiesta is Mexican food that you're accustomed to in the States because of the fact that we are actually south of the border. We're talking about having Mexican food that is comparable to the area in Mexico that we're in. So instead of like flour tortillas, you're going to see corn tortillas. So there's some different things that take place here, this part of Mexico. But La Fiesta is the kind of uh, Mexican food and it's a new restaurant but it gives you the type of Mexican food that you're accustomed to in the States. There's Bruno's. It's a steakhouse also. Tony's. Tony's is known for its steaks and also for its wines to go along with those steaks. Goch's has got great food. Casa Linda. Donald's Donuts is a great place to actually get breakfast and donuts. Uh, Pasta Trent is a great Italian restaurant. American Legion. You do not have to be a member to have breakfast or lunch there. Trips Burgers is actually in the mall. It's actually uh, kind of like if you went to In-N-Out Burger in the States. Mom's Deli is a great place to have breakfast and lunch. There's the French Bakery that's in West Ajijic. And then Four Two Santitos, which is in San Antonio, which is also a great choice. So these are just some of the better restaurants that you'll want to make sure that you get a chance to try while you're here at Lake Chapala. While we're talking about food and eating, let me kind of touch on tipping in Mexico. This is actually a tipping guide that um, after asking quite a few different individuals about tipping here, because I wanted to know too, it turns out that I wrote this all out. And again, this is when we, we were not here, but just a few months when we started our channel. So I put this out, but here's like what I would like to share with you. You know, the, the word tip actually stands for to ensure promptness. I would encourage you to tip 10 to 20 pesos at a minimum. 10 to 20 pesos. Now, if you're having an eating out session and you're with a bunch of people, I would encourage you to look at if it's one to five people, 10 to 15%. If it's more than six, then I would say 18%. Remember, Mexicans work really hard for their money. They don't make much but here's your opportunity of rewarding them for a good job. When you're at one of the hotels or Airbnbs and there's a maid service, uh, we tip. Also taxi services, the spas, 
Uh, if you're in a parking lot and you're getting your car washed, also the gal that actually bags up or men that bags up your groceries like at the grocery store or at Walmart, um, they only work off tips. So it's important to tip them. Also, the the gas clerk, when you go get gas, it's full service. They'll actually wash your windshield for you. Uh, they'll check the air pressure of your tires. It's full service. So after you've got your gas, you want to make sure that you're tipping them also uh, 10 to 20 percent, uh, 10 to 20 pesos, if not a little bit more than that. Uh, if the car is being valeted, the same thing. Just making sure that you're taking care of the people that are actually taking care of you. Remember again, we're in their country. It's really, really important to show appreciation and reward them for the hard work that they put in for us. Okay, so now let's talk about one of the probably most talked about subjects, and that is crime. So I'm going to talk about crime as a whole. I'm going to be using the crime as in the States, not in Canada. So when we're talking about crimes, here's what we're looking at. Aggravated assault, burglary, robbery, homicide, and rape. So what I'm going to be doing here is sharing with you some numbers uh, from the States and I'll be pointing out some things that's going to be really important for you to know about the crime. So here we're looking at a slide with the 10 states with the highest crime rate. That's right, the 10 states. It was amazing when I saw this because of the fact that the District of Columbia is number one, but number two is actually the state that I come from being New Mexico. But here's what I want to do. I don't want to show the high numbers, the big numbers, what I want to do is I want to go down to number 10, which is Oregon. Now, you see to the right that it says that in Oregon, there are 5,610 crime occurrences that takes place per 100,000 people. Now, you saw that right. There are 5,610 instances of crime that takes place per 100,000 people. So here's what I did. Oregon has a population of 2,220,000 in population. If we say we're going to round off the number of, instead of 5,610, we're going to go to 6,000. 6,000 goes into 2,220,000 22 times. So if we actually multiply that, it ends up being that there are 132,000 crime occurrences in Oregon that takes place every year. We don't think of Oregon as being a place of having high crime, but I'm just using one of the bottom states, <laughs> using their numbers, just to be able to show you about that. Now, here's what's really interesting. It is literally, there are 11,000 crimes committed every month. That is 366 occurrences every day, every day, crimes that take place in Oregon. All right, so let's take a look of what it's like as we're in Lake Chapala. Well, here you'll see, and I'm talking about two different seasons. I'm going to start out with the low season, which means that there's less expats. Now, Chapala shows about 25,000 in population, whereas Ahihik is about 11,500. Now, in this is included expats also. So if we go to the right, we're talking about a total population of about 36,500 expats, people in population that's here at Lake Chapala. Now, under that, it shows there was a homicide uh, October of 2020. There was a burglary in 2021. There was theft also in 2021. And here's what's really interesting. All those were recorded as being expat related, meaning we're not talking about a Mexican national having the homicide and shooting somebody. No, these are expats that have actually broken the law. Let's now take a look at when the most expats are here. It's the high season, which is November to April. Lake Chapala blossoms to about 60,000 in population. There was a homicide in July of 2021, a burglary in 2021, and there was theft in 2021. And again, that's expat related. 
That is unbelievable. And here's what's really interesting. People always say, well, you don't want to go to Mexico because there's a lot of crime and such there. Well, I just showed you numbers of crime taking place in one of the bottom, bottom uh, states in the U.S., and there are 11,000 crime instances taking place an entire month, 366 a day. And here I'm showing you that there was four crimes that were committed, and one is homicide, that have been committed, and it's taken them two years to actually have all that. Four instances in a two-year period of time. I will tell you, you're a lot safer being here at Lake Chapala than you are being in the States or Canada. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about Mexican health care. And I'm going to share with you uh, some things here about being able to save as much as 75 to 85% on health care. There is a vast number, a huge number, a very large number of people that cross the border from the U.S. that go into Mexico, come into Mexico to get health care. Whether it's medical or whether it's dental, this is a place where they come. Now, he, what I can do is I can just give you examples of people that I know personally that have had things done. I do know some right now that uh, in the States, they had their dentist before they came down here, give them an actual write-up and what it was as an estimate cost to have dental work done in the States and it was about $8,700. Now they came down here to Lake Chapala and they actually had it done for about $1,200. That's a huge difference. So what I'm sharing with you is this. There are a lot of people that are attracted to come to Mexico to be able to get dental work done, to get medical care. They actually come down from the States specifically for that. Medication. The medications are an incredible savings. I was just with one of my clients with my relocation service. I took them to one of the pharmacies and they were checking to see how much it costs. It was a matter of like a dollar fifty. A dollar fifty. That same medication in the States, they told me, was just over seventy-five dollars. A dollar fifty from seventy-five dollars. I could not believe that. Now, here's what's also interesting. Just because it takes a prescription for you to get your medication in the States does not mean that's the same thing that happens here. When you get here, you take your empty bottle, you take it to the pharmacy. Most likely, they're going to fill it without asking for a medication. If it's not a controlled substance or a controlled substance that is seen by the Mexican government, you will be able to get that medication without having a prescription. It's pretty phenomenal how it happens here. And I know that uh, that Barbara, when she gets her medications, it's a whole lot less than it is when she gets it in the States. So medical care, and one of the reasons why people come down to Lake Chapala. Now, here's a picture of one of the newest hospitals. This is called Ribera. This is in Upper San Antonio. It's a beautiful facility. I've been inside of it and just amazed of how everything is so updated and very, very clean, very clean. Here is San Antonio Hospital. This is the second newest hospital. And I recently had a healthcare provider that was here checking out moving to Lake Chapala. And we actually went inside and she looked at all the different services that the hospital provides and she could not believe it. Um, she could not believe how clean the interior of the hospital was and how nice it was. Well, I got to be honest with you. I was the same way when I came because I didn't know what to expect when I came to a Mexican hospital. It's absolutely unbelievable. And I will tell you, whenever I've spoken to someone who's actually been in the hospital, they've had an absolute wonderful experience. So that's actually talking about the medical care here at Lake Chapala. And if you, in fact, uh, come down on my relocation service, I actually take you to the hospitals. I actually take you to the pharmacy. That way you're able to find out what your medications actually cost. And I usually do this to one of the better hot, better pharmacies 
that actually have a great supply uh, of the medications that most people are looking for here at Lake Chapala. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk about renting versus buying and what's going to be important for you to know about before you get here. Now, there are long-term rentals and there are short-term rentals. Long-term are considered a year or more. Short-term is considered six months. So I went through looking at videos. I looked at quite a few publications looking for apartments, condos, houses to give you an idea of the price ranges. So to find a studio or a small apartment, we're looking at between three and four hundred dollars. That's U.S. dollars. A one bedroom, one bath condo, four hundred to seven hundred and fifty dollars. A two bedroom, two bath house, uh, we were paying six hundred and fifty dollars, but you can end up paying fifteen hundred or maybe a little bit more than that. When it comes to a three bedroom, three bath house, you can literally live in that size of a house anywhere from seven hundred to three thousand dollars plus. Now, one of the important things to ask about if you're coming and you're wanting to take a look at properties is what's included in the rent. Now, I know that some of you are coming down and you're just moving here. So we go out, I show you the area, and you've got an Airbnb for a week or two or even a month, but you're looking for a property. So once you're getting ready to really take a look at what's available, you're going to want to know what's included in the rent. Now, that could include these services. I don't guarantee that any of this is even in the rent, but these are actually things that there are listed in some rentals that are being paid for by the uh, the property owner, the property manager. Uh, the electric, gas, water, the HOA fees, property taxes, internet, cable TV, a gardener, housekeeper, having your own patio, a yard, lake view, mountain view, uh, finding a place that's got a pool, jacuzzi, gated community, security, clubhouse, a gym, fully furnished units, pets being allowed, and also washer and dryer. Some of the things that's available when, in fact, you're renting places here. Now, onto the right-hand side, I put there that when somebody's looking at buying a house, houses here, the market is at a real swift pace. So when something goes up for sale, it isn't for sale long. They're being bought up. Property hold their value really well here because of it being a desired area. Now, when a foreigner is purchasing a, pro a, purchasing a property, it's paid in 100% cash. So you're paying for the entire property 100% cash. Now, 22% of people that were surveyed said that they should have rented before they bought Obviously, they can't go back on that now, but that's a number that I wanted to share with you, that 22% of those that actually purchased felt they should have rented first. It gives you the ability to get familiar with the lakeside areas, and also the property taxes here are also very low, not into the thousands upon thousands, but we're talking about in the hundreds. So that's really covering renting versus buying. Now, here is actually a slide that I've taken the thumbnails of videos that I've done. Now, these are not properties that are two or three or four thousand dollars in rent. These are properties that are seven hundred dollars and below. Now, I, I've got a lot more than what I've got on here. I just want you to be able to see the thumbnails. But I want you to know if you're one of those ones that's really moving here because of the finances, I want you to know that you are able to find places that are $250 up to $700, obviously well beyond that. But what you're able to find here are properties that are very, very affordable if you're coming here because of finances and you want to find a nice place. They definitely are available here at Lake Chapala. Now, let's talk about realtors. Realtors here at Lake Chapala, there are over 250 realtors in the 19 miles between Hokotepec and Chapala. That's right, over 250 realtors. Now, that area, 19 miles, at the most widest part is about a mile. Now, I'm from Southern California, and if I chose a place that's 15 miles long and one mile wide, 
I could not find 250 realtors in that area in Southern California. So when you're choosing a realtor, you're getting somebody with training, certification, and experience. Is that correct? Is that really what you get? The answer to that is no. In Mexico, specifically here at Lake Chapala, someone become a realtor with no training, no certification, and no experience. Now, what am I really talking about? What I'm letting you know is all it takes to be a realtor here at Lake Chapala is a business card. You heard that right. All it takes to be a realtor here at Lake Chapala is a business card. I can't tell you how important it is to have a good realtor. You don't want to get into a scam. You don't want to be looking and running a place that actually doesn't even belong to the person renting it out. There's a lot of things that can happen. Remember, we're in a foreign country. It's Mexico. So it's really important to know not only who you're dealing with, but more importantly, dealing with somebody that's actually got some kind of experience. Now, here's what I want to let you know. And that is this, that whether you're renting or buying, you're handing over money to someone. Now, I, over the last about year and a half, have vetted, sorted, and sifted to find a few great superstars in the rental industry and real estate. They each have a heart for people. They want to help and serve you. And they have proven to me that they've got integrity, honesty, and one that I can trust, which means, in fact, when you come and you're utilizing my relocation service, I actually introduce you to them. So you know exactly that when you're actually using someone, you don't have to maybe try to find a good one. You'll be able to know right off the bat who this person is. So what I've done is I've assembled a circle of experienced business professionals that are very capable to handling all of your expat needs. I really value these individuals. I mean, they've become friends, you know, because they're at the top of their game and they're ready to serve. That's what it is that I offer is having that help of making sure that you're with the right kind of a person being a realtor just because of the fact that you do not have to be licensed, trained, or experienced. I've got the help for you that you would need in that resum. Now, here is something really in, important for you to know about real estate in Mexico. So, when you're looking at a Mexican real estate rental contract, you're going to have the rental contract. There will be people that tell you, because the majority of the people that you would rent a place here from would be a Mexican national because this is their country. So the rental contract, yes, it's in Spanish. You will be told it's also in English. I want you to know that the Spanish version of the contract supersedes the English version. Yes, you heard me right about that. The Spanish version, no matter what it says in English, the Spanish version supersedes the English version. That's an important thing for you to know. Now, if you were to break the lease, you were to move out earlier than you're supposed to, let's say over a six-month period or over a year, then you forfeit the last month's rent, the deposit, and if you've left a pet deposit, you actually uh, forego getting that back either. So there's something really important for you to know that in Mexico, you can sign a contract for a rental that could actually have included in the contract promissory notes. Now, I say promissory notes. That is plural, all right? The majority of the time, they are in Spanish only. Now, here's what happens. When you're signing the rental contract and you're signing away, you will not know that that's a promissory note that you're actually signing. But in Mexico, it's legal and and binding. It protects the landlord, making sure that they can recoup their monies that are owed to them. Now, here's what's really interesting. 
you might literally break your contract. So you're giving up on your last month, your deposit and your pet deposit. But here's what's important to know. In Mexico, it's legal and binding for them also to have that promissory note, which means they could get your last month's rent deposit and pet deposit, and you would have to pay this. It protects the landlord to make sure that they get all the monies owed to them. Now, Mexican real estate law legally allows landlords to double dip when it comes to their fees. Now, it's this is really an important thing to know about. When you are in Mexico, I really highly recommend that you use a real estate attorney. I've got a real estate attorney that I actually reviewed all my clients to come through the relocation service that I offer. Um, the the real estate attorney has really saved quite, a, I'm going to say that probably the dozen, 15 people that I've actually, that have used this real estate attorney have literally not signed the contract the way that the contract was listed, specifically because it had promissory notes in it. Now, I'm not trying to say, share this with you to scare you. What I'm wanting you to know and I want to impress upon you is it's really important to know in Mexico what you're signing. Really important. That is the reason it's important to have a great realtor that's experienced, that's certified, that really knows what they're doing so they can best serve your needs. And it's also a good idea to also have a real estate attorney making sure that you're when you're signing something, you know exactly what it is that you're signing. So, I talked about anxiety versus knowledge in the beginning. Now I'm talking about you now having more of an understanding of what to expect when you come to Lake Chapala. So you can say to yourself, I now have all the facts. My expectations have been discussed. I know what to anticipate. I've got a better awareness. My crime and safety concerns have been addressed. And I've got more of an understanding of the country itself, which means your anxiety is on the low side. Now, don't get me wrong. I fully understand that you could watch this video a couple times and still come with some anxiety. It's going to happen. It will happen. But I want you to know that you're going to be able to say, I got this. Now, one of the reasons that I really encourage folks with the relocation service that I offer is, okay, now you've got some of the information that's important about being here at Lake Chapala. What's really important to remember is you're making a big decision. It's a major life event to be selling everything you've got or bringing, packing everything up and bringing it down here. It's a major life event. You've got an investment of time and time's worth a whole lot more than money. You've got an investment of money, the investment of getting an airline ticket and coming down, the investment of where you're going to stay, the investment of any other things that you paid for when you're coming down, maybe some programs and such that you've paid for before you've even come to Lake Chapala. You've invested in mental energy. You've read about it. You've watched videos about it. You've got an investment of emotions up and down and hearing people when you tell them you're looking at moving to Mexico. So there's the fear of the unknown. There's anxiety, the stress. What I'm just, the question I would ask you is this. After all that investment, would you really want to try to come down and try to figure it all out? Or would it make sense to have somebody boots on the ground to be able to, in a matter of two days, really be able to talk to the individuals that you need to talk to, so that way you've got a real understanding of looking to move here to Lake Chapala. So, let me share with you what I include in my service. I take you along the 19 miles along the north shore of Lake Chapala through the 23 neighborhoods that span from the towns of Hokotepec to Chapala. Now, as we tour these neighborhoods, I point out where you can expect consistent high internet speeds. You can actually get more for your money when you're renting. 
areas that are consistent with utilities of electric and water and such. Also, where can you feel the safest? Where are you close walking distance to be able to go to everything that you need to? If interested, I also introduce you to, uh, to the gated communities so you get a chance to see them also. So I personalize the exploration relocation tour to fit your needs. I personalize in setting up appointments, introducing you to my circle of business professionals to fit your needs, not mine. I introduce you to, if the need is there, to an immigration attorney, a rental agent, insurance agent, hospitals and health care, a realtor, only if you're needing that, a moving service, the best ATMs to use to be able to get the best exchange rate, and there's so much more. I've offered my services now for the last 10 months and with amazing success. I've actually met with over four dozen couples. I personalize this time with you, and here's the most important thing. You get me as your personal guide. Barbara and I have now been here for two years, and I've got a really good feel, my thumb on the pulse, of what the most important places are and what is most important for you to know about when you're looking at moving here. And yes, I do all of this for only $400. US That's it. So if you're interested in getting more information, if you will email me your best contact number to jbsbigadventure521 at gmail.com. That again is jbsbigadventure521 at gmail.com. Please allow me about 24 hours to be able to return the phone call to you. Now, since we're at the end of this video, I have shared with you everything that's going to be important for you to know about once you get here to Lake Chapala. You've now got high knowledge and you have low anxiety. I wish you all the best on your time here, looking in to see if this is the place for you to retire here at Lake Chapala.